In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. The Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, as we know, is celebrated by the Christian faith, especially our Orthodox faith, on September 14th, tomorrow. And it recalls three historical events. The finding of the true cross by St. Helen, the mother of the Emperor Constantine, the dedication of churches built by Constantine on the site of the Holy Sepulcher, and the restoration of the true cross to Jerusalem by the Emperor Heraclius II. But in a deeper sense, the feast also celebrates the Holy Cross as the instrument of our salvation. But what is the significance of the cross in the life of an Orthodox Christian? Or even the life of a Christian? We, of course, know that it is, that it is through the cross that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ conquered death and had risen mankind into the glory of the kingdom of heaven and the presence of God the Father. If we want to know the role of the cross, we should be in our own lives, though. We need to look no further than the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. And these are the words of our Lord, which are recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 9, verse 23. Here, we have our Lord telling us that the thing required of any individual who wishes to follow him is to immediately and continually pick up his very own cross, which are their daily struggles, challenges, personal responsibilities. We are to embrace these challenges, responsibilities, and struggles with all our heart and to strive joyfully to overcome them and in the process grow into a more loving Christ-loving people. Realizing that our Lord taught his disciples the necessity that they needed to pick up their cross and to follow him, it makes sense that we enter into the new ecclesiastical year, which was September 1st. And that was the first major feast of the Lord that our church celebrates, but rather, I'm sorry, the first major feast of our Lord that the church celebrates is tomorrow, the Feast of the Cross, rather. It's clear that the church is trying to remind us the significance of the cross in our own lives and how it is necessary for each and every one of us all of us, including me, the priest, to pick up our cross before we begin our journey following our Lord in his footsteps. It is helpful for us to remember that the cross was an instrument of suffering and torture so that we can constantly remind that the life that we live is not easy that sometimes it will be necessary for us to embrace unpleasant realities within our own lives. The cross is an outward mark or a sign of our beliefs, which sets us apart from others. Because we are distinguished by the cross from non-believers in the world in which we live in, we will be ridiculed 
And we will have to bear this ridicule. We will be scorned, hated, just as our Lord was hated in his time. And in addition to the cross, we will bear our own cross because of our own sins. The cross is a protective armor that we put on when we are faced with adversity. It is a weapon used to drive away every enemy that we will face from the demons. We turn to the cross in time of trouble and we make the sign of the cross when we encounter danger, difficulties, sickness, and despair. And I will talk about that in just a moment. The cross is a warning to the enemies of God. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ warns those who know of him but decline to follow him or to follow him half-heartedly that they will not see the kingdom of God. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. We hear these words in the Gospel of St. Matthew in chapter 10, verse 38. But in, all in all, the cross is that beautiful symbol of faith and a constant reminder to all of us that our Lord loves each and every one of us. We're also reminded that we are his children and enjoy his eternal blessings, which he offers to those who love him and most of all, who are willing to serve him and to acknowledge him to the world. Orthodox Christians often wear crosses upon their bodies, whether it's a chain around the neck, a special pin, and we trace ourselves by the making of the sign of the cross during prayer as a visible expression of our faith. To make the sign of the cross is very simple, especially when we try to teach it to our children. We use our right hand. We hold our three tips of our fingers, our thumb, our index, and our middle finger, while we bend our ring finger and our pinky fingers against the palm of our hand. And the three fingers express the faith in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, while the two bent fingers express the two natures of our Lord, is the divinity and his humanity. When the Pharisees and the Sadducees were testing Jesus to find out for themselves that he was the Son of God, a lawyer asked him, which is the greatest of the commandments? And he answered, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Remember, And we remember this when we make the sign of the cross. And when we make the sign of the cross with our hand, we hold it in a special position. First, we touch our forehead for our mind, then our stomach for our body and our soul. And then we come to the right shoulder and to our left shoulder as a sign for our strength. And when we make these movements, we make it slow and deliberate. Instead of rather quick and sloppy, 
And sometimes when we see people make the sign of the cross, it's like this. And I asked somebody once in my family, I said, think I said, he busy his bazooki, right? So what are you doing? You're playing the bazooki. And that's not the way we should do it. We shouldn't be embarrassed to play the cross because this I don't understand. And the children don't understand. But rather, we make the sign of the cross nice and slow. We make this trace an upright cross rather instead of distorted upside down. And we practice making this cross, I tell the children, in front of the mirror. And one time a child said, when do we use the sign of the making of the cross in our lives? And the answer is every day. The sign of the cross is a great way to sanctify the body and bring Christ into your busy part of your day. Whether you're having a good day or a bad day. And here are just a few times during the day when you can make the sign of the cross tell them before you get out of bed to thank God for protecting you through the night before you prepare a meal for your family to thank God for the bounty my grandmother used to say a prayer I used to make the sign of the cross over the, the pot or the pan when she would make the food. One time someone saw me make the sign of the cross over the pot and they said, do you always pray over your food? I said, I pray over the food that come out good and tastes good. But more importantly, I pray over the food that God will bless me and gives me the strength to be able to cook before and after meals we make the sign of the cross to thank god for the food that he is providing us and as we pray we shouldn't be ashamed especially when we're in a restaurant to make the sign of the cross i see other faiths where they hold hands and pray at a table we as christians orthodox christians when we're out in public at a restaurant we shouldn't be ashamed to say a prayer and to make the sign of the cross before we eat. But rather we should be proud, proud of our faith, proud to be Orthodox because of the truth that we hold in our hands, in our heart, and in our souls. When we leave our homes, we make the sign of the cross upon leaving the house and pray to God that we will return from our journey and he will watch over our home, our house, or our apartment. When we pass a church, an Orthodox church, we make the sign of the cross. Or if we pass a monastery, we ask God to preserve the priest or the monks or the nuns who reside or work at that church and to pray for them and have them pray for us. We make the sign of the cross over our child as we bandage their little boo-boo. This way we will give them a sense that our Lord is with them as we bandage their little scrape as a kind of medicine and we ask that God will take their pain away and heal their little bodies. We make the sign of the cross over any new piece of equipment, tool, book, art supply, or any toy that we give our children or our houses that we bless as we dedicate them. And we ask God to guide us when using these gifts wisely 
in his service. We make the sign of the cross before, during, and after a meeting or conversation that we have, especially with someone you know to be difficult, that God will help us to give us the strength to find the proper words to approach people with the Christian love and understanding. As you begin any project, before and after this project we're working, we're studying, to ask God to guide us in our efforts. We make the sign of the cross before signing a contract or a lease or any legal agreement or even when you make a promise to someone that God will protect and guide all those who are involved that what we are doing is the right thing and everything will fall into place. As we mail or fax an important letter that God will see to it quickly to its destination and allow the reader to understand and not misinterpret its contents. When we hear news of something wonderful to thank God or if something terrible was to come our way, to ask God for his mercy and his protection. When we witness an accident, we make the sign of the cross to thank God for his protection and ask his help in setting things right and recovering from it. I know every time we hear an ambulance or see an ambulance or see a car accident, we teach our children, make your cross and pray that everybody is okay. When we pass the cemetery, we make the sign of the cross because we're reminded of our departed loved ones who have fallen asleep in the Lord and we ask God to forgive them their sins and we welcome them into his kingdom. We make the sign of the cross as we come through the door at night to thank God for his protection and bounty. Before we read the Bible, the teachings of the church fathers or the lives of the saints, we should make the sign of the cross and ask God to allow us illumination and to enlighten us when we read. And finally, at night before we go to bed, especially with our children, we should teach them to make the sign of the cross and say an evening prayer before they get into bed and to ask God for protection while we sleep. There are so many Orthodox prayer books which include special prayers, which say special blessings for our children and for adults before bed. And if we wake up in the middle of the night after hearing a bump or a screech for having a bad dream, we make a sign of the cross and ask God for protection from all evil and to guide us and to watch over us. But most of all, we make the sign of the cross as a remembrance that it was the cross that our Lord sacrificed himself for each and every one of us that so one day we may be with him and live forever 
in eternity, in paradise. May the feast of the cross be upon the blessings, rather, of the cross be with you and your loved ones. And for all those who celebrate tomorrow, may God bless you, keep you always, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen.